in the first part we have seen till the formation of the blastocyst isn't it yes so today we are going to see the rest and you know children the blastocyst it not only really give rise to the tissues or organs of the embryo but also to a number of structures you know which helps the embryo to acquire nutrition so let's get started isn't it so today we will be learning about the formation of embryonic disc and till the formation of extra embryonic mesoderm and coelom so let's get started so to begin with the embryo proper it is a three layered disc and you children know that ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm these three layers give rise to the different parts of our body so let's get started how these three layers are formed so initially the first layer to form is the endoderm let's see how it is formed just we will we will be saying this as a story just here till the last in the previous section we have said that we have the trophoblastic layer and the inner cell mass now some cells of the inner cell mass things to get differentiated now what do you mean by differentiated it means they become different from some some of the cells so the inner cell masses or the embryoblast some of them will get differentiated now how do they get differentiated yes they become more flattened now they become flattened and they lie free that is they, they are not attached on top as well as on bottom and that forms the endoderm now the rest of the cells of the embryoblast or the inner cell mass they become more columnar and that forms the ectoderm or the epiblast so the rest of the cells of the inner cell mass becomes columnar and forms the ectoderm now a space arises between the ectoderm and the trophoblast and that space is called as the amniotic cavity so amniotic cavity is lined by ectoderm below and trophoblast above and now this also this trophoblast see this trophoblast they also produce some type of cells that is called as the amniogenic cells they will give rise to some cells they will divide into some type of cells and that is called as the amniogenic cells now inside this amniotic cavity we have the amniotic fluid or you can also call that as the liquor amni now what happens the endoderm okay or the hypoplast these cells they will get proliferated they proliferate and they line the blastocyst cavity of the blastocyst and they lie like this you can see do they line the blastocyst the cavity like this and they fill and they that forms the primary yolk sac so the cavity is lined by on all sides by the cells of the endodermal origin isn't it that is the hypoblastic origin so that cavity is now called as the yolk sac which yolk sac primary yolk sac now you can also call this as the husser's membrane okay this one is called as the husser's membrane since it is lining the blasto blastocystic cavity so now we have the trophoblastic layer the amniogenic cells the amniotic cavity the uh, epiblast or the ectoderm then the hypoderm or the endodermal origin cell lining the primary yolk sac children i guess the trophoblast is not liking this do you know why i said because now what happens the trophoblast will produce proliferate 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 and produce a lot and lot of cells and thereby they separate this structure from the trophoblast okay so now this mass of cells that was produced by the trophoblast is called as the extra embryonic mesoderm why it is called as extra embryonic mesoderm yes because it does not form a part of this embryonic disc or you can more clearly say it is outside the embryonic disc that's why we call it as extra embryonic mesoderm 
Now, what happens next? There happens to be some cavity formation now. Can you see over there? Yes. Later, these cavities will join together to form a large cavity. And that is called as the extra embryonic coelom. Now, do you have any idea what the coelom has done? Yes, it has splitted the extra embryonic mesoderm into two parts, isn't it? Did it split the whole of the extra embryonic mesoderm? No, yes, you can see some portion over here which is unsplit. So let's see what did it split it into, how it was splitted. Now the, the portion that is lining the hypodermal cells or the endodermal cells are called as the visceral or splanchnopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm and those that are lining towards, lying towards the trophoblastic layer is called as the parietal or somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm. Now, see children, the size of this yolk sac have been reduced. And do you find any other difference from this diagram and this diagram? Yes, I heard someone. Most of the cells over here are flattened, isn't it? The primary yolk sac, the green colored cells are flattened. But now, here it has become cuboidal cells. Yes. Now, what happened as this extra embryonic coelom formed? It reduced the size of the primary yolk sac and not only that, the cells have acquired a more cuboidal structure. And now we will no more call it as a primary yolk sac but we call them as the secondary yolk sac. Okay, now I said to you before there are some places where there is unsplit mesoderm. Now that mesoderm, what happens? The embryo and the amniotic cavity is been attached to the trophoblast by this unsplit mesoderm and thereby that that is this part will form the future connecting stock. Now children you also have to remember two more things. There is an important the most two most sorry the two most important portion is the amnion and the chorion. Now what are these structures? Yes chorion means the formation of chorion is by you can see it contains the parietal extra embryonic mesoderm inside and the trophoblastic layer outside. So chorion is a structure which is formed by these two structures. And am amnion, it is formed by the amniogenic cells which is present in the amniotic cavity. Now also remember that the cells which are present on top of the ectoderm, it does not take part in this formation of amnion. Amnion is mostly, it is purely formed by the amniogenic cells. And not only that, this amnion from this diagram, it is very clear, it is covered by the parietal extra embryonic mesoderm. You can see here, isn't it? It is covered by the parietal extra embryonic mesoderm. And not only that, this amnion is attached to the trophoblast here by the, yes, by the connecting stalk. It is attached. That means the connecting stalk is attached to the amnion also, isn't it? Yes. So this is what the formation of the extra embryonic mesoderm and the extra embryonic coelom and not only that, we have seen how amnion and chorion has developed. So thank you children. Thank you so much. Wait for our next video to be uploaded. Do comment like, share and subscribe. Thank you.